Oh, let's talk seed starting. It's one of Ooh, my exciting. favorite topics, right? Let's see. So seed starting is the best way to get a jump on the growing season ahead. Um, it also gives you access to varieties that you are not going to find at a big box store or in your greenhouse. But before we get into the tools and the basic steps, I want to emphasize the importance of heat mats. So regardless... <laughs> Um, if the room is warm or you're using overhead lighting, the soil temperature needs to be regulated. You, you need a heat mat, hands down, no matter uh, if you're one, one tray or 50 trays. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game changer, really. It really is. It speeds up that germination time and gives you much more even germination within a tray, regardless, even if you have any carryover seed that maybe was last year, you didn't use it all, it'll, it'll help boost those germination rates like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing. So uh, first on the list, obviously, is a heat mat on your supplies. <laughs> That's right. You definitely want a heat mat. Plug flats or pots, a leak-proof tray to go underneath, dome lids to go on top to help keep that condensation in there, and then good lighting, uh, a fine seed-starting soil or vermiculite, wonderful seeds that you have already chosen, of course, tags, labels, notebooks, some kind of system so you keep track of what you planted. <clears throat> Those are the core core supplies that you need to start your seeds yourself. And the steps are pretty basic, but but there's there's a few of them. So let's go through each one. Your first is you're going to fill your seed trays or your pots to the top with your uh, with your soil. And make sure that you're picking a good seed start. Don't use a, a potting soil or a potting mix or something like that. Make sure you're getting a good seed starting soil, preferably a very fine vermiculite. And why, why do you need that? Why? What difference does it make? Well, it makes a difference in a few ways. You could, let's say you're using a potting mix. You might have, you know, if you never notice, if you're looking, you're comparing a potting mix to, say, a seed starting mix. The seed starting mix is very fine. It's, it's broken down quite a bit. A, a potting mix or, you know, just your regular garden soil, it's going to have large chunks of bark and, and different things in there. Your seed may not actually make contact with the mm, soil. You know, there's a, there's a few different situations. You could burn the seeds with too much fertilizer. There may be something in, in that soil that's not good for the seed yet. You know, you, you want to do that later once the plant is established. So Okay. And some of the, especially if you're starting flower seeds, you'll see on the seed packets, we have a note that says light required and do not cover. A seed starting mix allows you to keep that seed from being heavily covered and allow that light to get there in order to germinate that seed. Some seeds are just and like snapdragons are so tiny, you're going to lose them anyways. And moisture content to your potting mix um, will very often hold too much moisture um, and you want a good, a well-drained seed starting mix that Absolutely. makes it easier. Yeah, you have to water them every day or, you know, at least mist them, but that's the whole purpose is to make sure that they maintain even moisture Absolutely. and not go wet to dry, wet to dry. Mm -hmm. And like you said that, you know, it could stay too damp. So you could drown, you could drown your seeds. So there's all kinds of the things that could happen if you're not using the proper soil when you're starting. <clears throat> okay. What's our next step? So after you've, you've filled your trays, I like to tap them down on the table just to kind of work out any air pockets or anything like that. It's nothing too, too fancy. Um, and then moisten the soil. Very damp, but not sopping wet. You can do this by misting it heavily from above or adding water to the bottom of the tray and then allowing it to soak up. Either way or fine, whatever works best for you or a combination of the two work well also. Don't forget to label the tray. So yes. you, know, <laughs> you know what you're planting. Um, I like to put the date down as well. As well, that way you know if you know if something hasn't germinated within a particular window. Yes, you can look it up to make sure that you didn't plant a seven day germination variety next to a twenty one day germination variety. Yes, because very often it's it's easy to blame yourself that I did something wrong when really the seed just isn't ready to come out. Yeah. Exactly. So don't forget those labels. Okay. <laughs> so next, make a shallow hole in each tray or pot. You can use your fingertip, a chopstick, pencil, anything like that. And you drop one to two seeds per hole. Typically, cover the seeds with a thin layer of the seed starting mix, uh, but be careful not to bury them too deeply. And always remember that some seeds don't want to be covered, as Wendy, Wendy mm -hmm. mentioned just a moment ago. So reference your seed packet um, and the different germination details to make sure that you're following the proper, proper guidelines. Uh, my rule of thumb on the vegetable side is that I plant the seed twice, the depth is twice the thickness of the seed. Mm -hmm. 
So your bigger seeds need to be a little bit deeper. Your smaller seeds can be closer to the surface. Exactly. A sunflower you're going to put lower than yeah. the snapdragon. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So let's see. So we've got the seeds covered now and one more guest, good mist of water. I think once you've got them covered, I like to give them just another mist of water and then put the dome on. You set the trays on a heat mat, which is typically around 70 degrees and under your grow lights, of course. Um, it's important to make sure that your lights are not too far away, but also not too close. You don't want the plants to get leggy, which means you know, they're kind of reaching really far. Um, to try to get to the light and you also don't want to i don't think you're going to have a problem with burning them necessarily no not yet <laughs> dome want to make sure it's just you know a, a few inches above what's the purpose of the dome so i'm glad you asked because <laughs> i was just about to say don't lift your dome you want that natural condensation to build up for several days you're keeping the moisture kind of regulated you're preventing you're preventing something <laughs> evaporation thank you exactly you're preventing evaporation so Plant don't seeds like it humid they like that humidity and that's that's why the dome is often called called a humidity dome mm -hmm. absolutely it helps maintain that moisture for a, a lot you don't have to spend as much time watering and it doesn't again you know cycle back and forth between dry and dry and wet absolutely. creates a nice little habitat for the yep. so they get their their best start so don't lift your dome for several days for the first several days if when the soil dries out after the first few days, you can water it from the bottom, or again, you can spray from the top. Either one is fine. You're not going to want to pour water, obviously, on top because that's going to, aside from the fact it's going to run off, it's going to disrupt where your seeds are and, and all kinds of bad things. Could wash them right out of exactly. the tray. <laughs> Some of them could wash right away. Check on your pots and your trays daily. Just to make sure, you know, if you note anything, if you know, if you do have some seeds coming up, or if you know you're having some mixed germination, or maybe it's too dry, too too wet, whatever it may be. And once you have a good amount of sprouts, I typically say, you know, between fifty and seventy five percent, you can remove the dome, um, and you can start kind of acclimating them. Um, we actually just had some, we took the dome off on some of our seedlings this week and they got a little shocked. They were like, what did you do? Because <laughs> it's cold in here. Yeah. Why did you do that to us? So don't, don't worry if that happens to you. What we did is we just put the dome back on. <laughs> and we will maybe put some, use some shims of some sort and just lift it up a little bit or offset the dome to let a little more airflow in there before you remove it completely. Exactly. Exactly. So those baby steps, which brings me to hardening off your plants. So taking baby steps with your plants to make yeah. sure that once you know you're done, you know you've you've set them up for a good life. Let's let's continue to do so. So hardening off your plants um, before they're planted in the garden is a really simple practice, but it's really important. Very important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If not, they'll most likely be shocked by the changing conditions. So. Mm -hmm. You simply put the plants outside in a shady spot, not full sun. They can get some dappled sunlight. That's absolutely fine. That's protected from wind and animals. So you're not going to want to set them out somewhere where your chickens can get at them or that your cats are going to go wander through because that's definitely That's happened. a bad idea. <laughs> it sounds like you're talking from experience. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it's too fun. Yeah. Just for a couple of hours. So each day you're going to take them out for two to four hours max for the first two or three days. And then increase that amount of time each day over one to two weeks until they become acclimated to the new environment. Yeah, and don't don't pick a day that's that's cold. Mm -hmm. Start with a day that's close to the climate conditions inside the house mm -hmm. or wherever you were starting your seeds. Absolutely. Start with a similar temperature range, little bits at a time, and then the first warm night you have, you're ready to just leave them leave them in that protected spot. Mm -hmm. You can leave them out overnight. But don't do it all at once. It's not a good scenario. Yes, I've definitely had dogs walk off with entire trays. <laughs> I've had chickens have a snack. <laughs> Deer, yes. Yes. Deer come up and decide that that was for them. So definitely a protected area, not just from the wind and the sun, mm -hmm. but from whatever little critters may be around.